These are the biggest, toughest warships the Royal Navy's ever built, called the Queen Elizabeth class insane carrier. We're talking 65,000 tons and 284 meters long warship. They project global air power, carrying up to 36 F-35B stealth jets and a variety of helicopters. What's really cool is their unique twin island design for better visibility and redundancy. Plus, because they work perfectly with the F-35B jump jet, they can use a simple ski jump ramp instead of complicated, costly catapults and wires. The carriers are also incredibly advanced inside. They use an efficient integrated electric propulsion system and a state-of-the-art automated rail system called HMWHS. This HMWHS is like a massive robotic warehouse that moves bombs and missiles quickly, helping keep the planes flying fast and often. This clever engineering prepares the ships for a projected 50-year career with maximum efficiency. Okay, now, it's not all about the insane thing. Even with all that amazing tech, the biggest headache for the carriers has been their reliability and ability to stay operational. Both ships have had highly publicized mechanical failures, especially with their propeller shafts. These issues have been a real embarrassment, forcing them to bail on huge international exercises. Critics are seriously wondering if these are deep, systemic flaws rather than just normal teething problems for a new ship class. The other huge worry is that the carriers aren't properly protected. A warship this big is useless if it's not safe, right? Well, critics keep pointing out that the Royal Navy often doesn't have enough F-35s or enough escort ships like destroyers to properly defend the Queen Elizabeth class in a serious fight. Since the carriers only have short-range self-defense, a swarm of enemy missiles or drones could be disastrous without a full protective fleet. This combination of mechanical issues and lack of escorts leads some to argue that the Queen Elizabeth class are just expensive status symbols that can't reliably go to war.